Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Justin with ExcelSmith. If you've been here before, welcome back. In a previous video, we showed how with a couple simple steps, we can turn data from this into this. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to check out that video. The report with the merge cells is easy to read, but doesn't play nice with features like filtering or pivot tables. The second report is functionally more useful, but is harder to read. The other day I was thinking, there has to be a way to have the best of both worlds. Then it hit me, we could use conditional formatting to turn this report into something that's both easy to read and is able to take advantage of Excel's analytical features. It's kind of like having your cake and eating it too. Let's get started. Hmm, we need cupcakes in every video. We're starting with a pretty typical looking report. We have a couple categorical columns and a value column. Our goal is to create a report that looks like this, but allows us to do things like this. To accomplish our goal, we'll build two conditional formatting rules. The first formatting rule hides the duplicate labels in columns A and B, which mimics merging the cells. The first equation needs to return true for all duplicate shape and color values. Before jumping into conditional formatting, let's test this out in column D. In cell D2, enter an equal sign and then select cell A2, the first cell in our data. Next, we'll compare this to the cell above it by entering another equal sign and selecting cell A1. Press enter and then copy down the equation. We can see that the first instance of square and circle returns false since they don't equal the value in the cell immediately above. However, all other instances of square and circle return true since they are equal to the above values. Now that we know what we're going for, we can delete the values in column D. We're ready to build our first conditional formatting rule. Start by selecting the data in the range A2 through B15. Next, from the home ribbon, select conditional formatting and then new rule. Change style to classic and select use a formula from the next dropdown. Like the equation we built in column D, we'll start our conditional formatting function by typing an equal sign. Next, select cell A2. Lastly, type another equal sign and then select cell A1. Conditional formatting assumes we want to lock our cell references. However, for this solution, we need to remove the locked cell references as we want the formula to be specific to each cell in the range as opposed to the same reference for all cells in the range. You can press F2 to go into edit mode, which allows us to navigate with the arrow keys. If you don't want to fuss with F2 and arrow keys, you can just use your mouse to place the cursor next to the dollar signs. Go with whichever option floats your boat. Just be sure to remove the dollar signs without changing the cells referenced in the equation. Our equation is finished, but we still need to update the formatting. Before we do that, let's press OK with the default red highlighting to see what the equation is doing. The equation has ignored the first instance of each value in columns A and B while highlighting the repeated values. The red highlighting is exciting, but our goal is to make the duplicate values disappear. To update our formatting rule, select Conditional Formatting from the Home ribbon. This time, instead of pressing New Rule, select Manage Rules. If you don't see your rule listed, make sure you first select your data range. Alright, let's go back to Manage Rules. Now that we see our rule, we can select Edit Rule. Select the dropdown next to Format With and click on Custom Format. To give the illusion that the duplicate values have disappeared, from the Font section, set the color to white. If your spreadsheet has a background color other than white, make sure to select that color instead. This takes care of the text values. Lastly, we need to update the border formatting to really sell the illusion of merged cells. Select Border from the top navigation of the Format Cells dialog box. We need to change the formatting of only the top border. We want to leave the side borders in place to separate our columns. We also will leave the bottom border in place since it would be affected as the top border if the next value is a duplicate. Like the text, set the border color to white to match our background. With the border color set, select the top borderline selection button. Make sure to keep watching after we replicate the look of merged cells. We'll continue the conditional formatting fun to take the user experience up another notch. Now that our font and top border have been set to white, we can press OK. We're finished with the formatting rule, so press OK again, and once more. 
Just like that, we've created a formatting rule that makes our data look like we've merged the cells for each distinct value in columns A and B. Unlike with merged cells, our report can still take advantage of features like pivot tables since each row still contains a complete set of data. If you're getting value from this video, don't forget to press those like and subscribe buttons. It supports the channel and lets us know we're providing helpful content. In addition to pivot tables, we can also filter our data. Let's filter shape to show only the squares. Let's see what happens if we want to see only green squares. Unfortunately, we've lost our shape value. I mean, it's still technically there, its color has just been formatted to white, which is why we can't see it. Fortunately, we can add another conditional formatting rule to change the color of a duplicate value if it's the first value displayed, like the value square in A5 when filtering for green squares. Let's clear our filtering. Like before, we'll build an equation in column D before jumping to conditional formatting. We need an equation that returns true when a value is the first instance in a filtered list. To accomplish this, we'll be using the subtotal function since the subtotal function doesn't count filtered values. In cell D2, enter an equal sign, the function name subtotal, and an open parentheses. The first parameter is the type of calculation we want the subtotal function to perform. Our goal is to count if there is a value in the cell above a given row. Since our values in columns A and B are strings, we need to use the count A option. Select option 3 and then type a comma to move to the next parameter. Our second parameter would be the values we want counted. Normally, subtotal is used with a range of cells. However, for this purpose, we will only be entering a single cell, the cell above the row containing the equation. This means that for our equation, we will set the second parameter to a1. Type a closing parentheses and press enter. Then drag down the equation to cover each row in our dataset. Each equation returns the number 1 because it's counting the single value in the cell 1 row above itself. The trick happens when we filter our data. Let's filter shape to show only squares. Nothing exciting has happened yet with the subtotal function, but can you feel the anticipation building? Ok, no more waiting, let's see why we built this equation. Note the equation value for the first instance of green in cell D5, and then filter color to show only green. The top remaining subtotal function now shows a value of 0. This is because subtotal ignores filtered values. In other words, the subtotal function in cell D5 is trying to count a value in cell A4, but since A4 is filtered, the count returns 0. Conditional formatting needs equations that evaluate to true and false. This means we just need to modify our equation to see if the subtotal function is equal to 0. Let's clear our filters and then modify the equation in cell D2. After the closing parentheses, enter an equal sign and the number 0. Press enter and then copy down the equation. Like before, nothing too exciting yet as each equation returns false. Pay attention to the value in cell D5 and then set the same filters as before, which was squares that are green. We now see that the first row contains a true, while the duplicate row contains a false. This means we can set unique formatting for the first row in the filtered set. Let's clear the filters again. This time, rather than retyping the equation in the conditional formatting box, let's just copy the equation in cell D2. Like before, we'll start by selecting the range A2 through B15. Again, we want to add a new conditional formatting rule. Set style to classic and the next dropdown to use a formula. In the formula bar, paste in the subtotal function we copied earlier. Next, select the format width dropdown and then custom format. Essentially, we need this formatting rule to undo the formatting we established with our initial rule. First, select font and then set color to automatic. I found that even if it says automatic, I still have to select it for it to work properly. Next, we need to update the border to get rid of the top white border from the other formatting rule. Select the drop down under line color and select the second gray option. Click the top border button to set our new color. That's it. Press OK and then OK one more time. Doesn't look like much has changed, but the magic happens when we start filtering. First, let's delete the values in column D since we don't need them anymore. Let's take our updated conditional formatting rule for a spin. 
Notice the shape text next to green is not visible for either square or circle. Let's filter color to show green. Like magic, the square and circle text at the top of these sections becomes visible. Let's add blue back in to make sure everything is working as expected. Perfect! The shape values are still only visible for the first instance. With some creativity, we were able to use conditional formatting to build a report that has both form and function. With all that filtering power at our disposal, it might be tempting to throw some summary statistics at the bottom of the report. Before going to town with functions like sum and average, check out this video to learn the correct way to add summary statistics when filtering data. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.